This is the Earth Science Channel. Welcome back. This is the Rock Cycle Part 6. This is all about reforming magma. So the previous parts of this uh, video series on the Rock Cycle, parts 1 through 5, have really focused on you know, starting the magma and lava uh, position in the Rock Cycle and kind of following through the arrows shown through various stages of the rocky material and the transformation that rock material takes from a liquid to various solid components, including sediment above the ground into sedimentary rock. And then the burial and diagenesis turns into metamorphism and the production of this kind of rock, which is deep underground. Now, this video in particular is going to look at this area right here, this arrow, this transformation from a solid rock type back into a liquid material, which is magma, mostly magma. Lava is not really involved in this because lava is looked at on the ocean, on the, uh, the surface of the earth, whereas magma is the deeper down component of this molten liquid uh, material. So as this first bullet point kind of illustrates and discusses is that the rock cycle is this continuous movement of rocky material that goes through different states of matter that basically uh, through a long period of time go through each stage of rock type and process and eventually end up in the same uh, starting point or origin which would be magma, um, principally magma. So this is the process of going from liquid to solid and then back to liquid again through various processes and obviously a long time. So, well, in terms of the stages, we've gone from part five, which was metamorphism. So you had this metamorphic rock, which had been formed through um, different uh, prolith, uh, beginning rock, source rock, and uh, through the application of temperature and pressure, through the geothermal gradient and um, different grades based on temperature and pressure thresholds, you would get this metamorphic rock. However, any rock can be buried. Any rock can go down to a certain point in the Earth's uh, interior, mainly the lower crust, lithosphere especially, and also into the asthenosphere and this is all basically the upper mantle, where you get conditions that would create magma. So it will turn that solid rock back into liquid. Now, the basic part we can all agree on is the fact that the rock has to go through melting, which means to increase thermal energy and the exposure of that energy onto the rock to either partially melt or fully melt the minerals that are the composition of the rock. So there's different ways we can do this. So if I add in this little table here, very straightforward. So this is depth, and that also corresponds to pressure. So millibars or kilobars or pascals or atmospheres, whatever you want to do. And then obviously you can have temperature in Celsius. So this is our starting point on the surface. Now the geothermal gradient kind of goes down like this. And it's between 20 to 30 degrees Celsius per kilometer of depth. So you increase by this temperature every depth you go down in the Earth's interior. Now this can change, this is the average. This can change based on conditions and what you add in to the rock. Now, normally, normally you have this kind of line which shows the the point where rocks would melt. So this is a solid material and this is a liquid material. And obviously, as you go away from that thing, you get the ever increasing percent of liquid material. So here might be, right here might be partial, partial melting. And as you go away, you get fully into more uh, liquid material. But the geothermal gradient is here. So technically, at any depth with the increased temperature, this rock, Wherever it is in this red line is still going to be solid because it's on that solid area. However, we know that rocks melt and it's typically in the asthenosphere. 
and or the lower crust depends on situation and this happens between either the crust is 80 to 100 kilometers or the asthenosphere would be between 150 kilometers depth to 220 and this is known as the lbc the low velocity zone which is in involved with electricity and involved with speed of the uh, seismic waves so at a certain depth we know there's magma being created and it's a very small amount around one percent however it's still magma being created so the majority is still rock but how do we get the magma so what we have to do is the first one is over here we have to raise the geothermal gradient so this red line has to go more towards that dashed silver line which is called solidus which is where you start getting the partial melting and if we can go really far with it we can actually go and take that rock and make it fully liquid now there's different ways to do that so raising the gradient uh, can be done through decompression melting so when the the uh, volume of, of, of rock uh, is uh, brought up towards the surface into an area of less pressure there's more room for the atoms and molecules to move around so more chance of melting okay Next one would be convection currents. Again, moving that material towards the surface through heat movement, again, allowing the heat, the contact to melt the rock around it um, in a lower pressure situation. Next one is the increased activity of radio activity and the, the decay and isotopes and the release of heat and energy to melt the rock again to move that gradient. The last one would be friction. Friction involved with subduction zones. The next thing is to lower that solidus line. So we have our little graph again. All right, here's our temperature, here's our pressure and depth, and here is our geothermal gradient right there. Here is our solidus line. Okay, and here's our liquidus line. And it's partial gradient in between. So put S there for solidus and L for liquidus. So the next thing we can do besides raising the geothermal gradient is to lower this solidus line and bring that more towards the geothermal gradient, whereby that's the average temperature, heat and pressure based on depth, and you're going to increase the chance of melting that rock and creating magma. So the main thing we can do with this is called flux melting. Now this is involved with adding, adding uh, water and gases, mostly CO2, into the mix. So you're adding this into the, uh, the chemistry of the rocks, and this is going to lower the melting point of that rock. So let's say you have a, a sample of granite, right? We're in continental uh, crust. And that granite, let's say it melts at 1000 degrees centigrade let's just say on average now if you add in the co2 and the water into the granite through avenues like subduction through cracks and hydrothermal vents or um ocean trenches you're going to lower that 1000 degrees and make it 900 degrees or 800 degrees and it makes it easier or a lower temperature to start to melt so it's going to encourage the melting process if you lower the melting point. And finally, so this is really about the dry rocks. The dry rocks right here, okay? And then the wet rocks would be our flux melting here. Now, once we've made that magma, the magma comes in three types, really, based on what rock is being melted. And the magma creates in three types. You have basaltic, you've got andesitic, and you have rhyolitic. This is all based on the silica amount, the SiO2 amount percentage, and this would lead us nicely into volcanoes and volcanology, and kind of completes the cycle that is the rock cycle. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, check out more videos on our channel, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you again.